Yo, back with episode 71 of Dot the Journey. As always, not recorded that much recently. Um, try and keep this one semi-brief, like just a general update. I suppose I just got out of the shower as well. It's just got back on running and I'm in a rush. Hence, I sound breathless as fuck. Yeah, the reason I've been like chopping and changing, whether I want to do this often, what can I do in the dock to mix, mix it up? Do I just document the whole thing? Am I oversharing, etc.? It's because I basically got to the inflection point where I felt like the benefit of doing this series, I, it was exciting at the start, the honeymoon phase of starting a new project. Obviously wanted to share it, It'd be great to look back on in years to come. But then, yeah, like obviously if people started ripping the brand. I feel like I'm giving, to be honest, too much free game away, which is actually really fucking valuable for people starting brands, which obviously generally I'm fine with. But when it's competitors, etc., I'm just like a bit hesitant now. So how much should I share? Do I just keep it high level and then it's a bit fluffy? Or by definition, is that is that the only way to do it without sharing too much? Is net negative, etc. So what I'm probably going to do is just keep sharing stuff. But maybe I'll just try and be less less specific with what's working, what's not working, etc. I suppose the other point about all this is like people say, oh, don't make, don't make the dot because that's why you're getting rips, etc. It's going to just encourage competition. But I think, to be honest, a bigger reason for that is just we spend a shitload on ads. People know the brand in the UK, especially. So that's going to attract competition. I suppose like the personal element of it, me doing the dock, probably does make it more more prone to like people wanting to do a similar thing because they feel like a connection watching the watching the dot like I've done like 70 episodes since I started the brand two years two months now on this series so yeah I don't know I'm still going to keep doing it I think it'd be great to look back on years to come but yeah that's kind of why I'm a bit hesitant to what I should share how much I should share etc not knowing like the best way to keep this series interesting and honest but also not oversharing and just being like stupid for me to put it online um so yeah a few random topics I always feel like I, I write down or I think of cool shit to talk about on the YouTube or like to tweet about or a concept that's bugging me and then I forget what it is. I write a few things down that are on my mind. Um, the first thing is I think there's so many easier ways to make money than building a consumer brand. In fact, I'd almost go as far as saying like anything other than building a consumer brand in 2024 is probably an easier route to making money, at least to like a certain point. Certainly to make like 100 grand a year, you'd be better off going to get a job in finance than you would be starting a consumer brand, profiting, being able to take enough money out personally to pay yourself 100K, just to use like an easy money example. Um, obviously the potential upside, if you get it right, is way, way, way bigger than, than some other stuff or certainly than getting a job. But, you know, starting an agency other than starting a property business, um, working in recruitment, for example. I mean, I don't know those businesses, but I do think consumer, particularly D2C consumer, and what just consumer brands in general, CPG in particular, is very fucking hard. You, you, you've got to be good at, at least very competent at product, brand, marketing, supply chain, operations, customer service, managing a team, managing cash flow. And be always on because it's 24-7. It's not like you open the shop, you shut the shop, and you have the weekends off. Like, it's always on. Stuff's going wrong all the time. People are buying stuff all the time. Obviously, that's great. Like, e com never sleeps, but it's also fucking challenging. And I just think, yeah, the reality is it's really fucking hard to build a brand. And I think you have to genuinely want to build products and, and brands to do it because there are so many easier ways to, you know, build a lifestyle business or build some, like, generate a good income. Um... But at the same time, on the flip side of that, I think it's so hard, but it's also like the sickest thing. Like who wants to build a recruitment business really compared to building like a sick product brand that eventually gets in the hands of like millions of consumers. To me, it's like the ultimate alchemy of entrepreneurship. It's like you literally think of a product, design it, create it, put it out into the world. And eventually hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people eventually are buying it every year and using it and hopefully loving it. So that's what being a fan is all about, in my opinion. And it's fucking hard work and there's a lot of variables and a lot of things. But yeah, it, it is cool when you take a step back and think, like, w what other industry has that zero to one to many kind of thing? So I don't know. Yeah, I was chatting with my mate about that the other week and just got me thinking. Um, yeah, and another good milestone. So we hit our first seven figure month. That'll be this month, actually, in July which is cool. Um, I think we could have got there quicker, but I've been very, very big on growing this business sustainably. And also that's a profitable month as well. It's not like we're just burning loads of VC money because I know there's a bit of a stereotype that brands that raise investment just aren't profitable, burn a fuckload of money, 
to buy shit revenue, but that's not the case. Um, so yeah, it's a good milestone. I haven't actually done a seven figure month in e-com since I think it was September or October, 2020. So like nearly four years ago, which is pretty mad. It's, it's taken me that long to build momentum with obviously a proper brand. Would have been arguably a lot, a lot quicker if I just, I don't know, started drop shipping again. But yeah, that's a cool milestone to get back to. Um, and yeah, I think in, I, f- I felt like the, the brand started relatively slow. Like a lot of people say, you've grown really quick. I mean, like in the first eight months, the first year, 22, we did like 1.2 million. Last year, we did about 4 million. This year, hoping for 10 plus um, pounds. So to me, that feels quite slow because I've done quicker before. And I know a lot of people that have built brands bigger and faster. And that's just the downside of knowing a lot of successful people and being in those circles. But I genuinely feel like that's pretty slow. But I suppose to a lot of people, that they're pretty good numbers. Um, and yeah, I guess it's quite cool to hit that milestone. Um, and yeah, it does feel like when you build a brand, especially one that people actually enjoy the product of, it's not just like a first order, fucking buy it once, never come back sort of thing. You know, a pump and dump, like stuff I've done in the past to some extent, like Neon. Um, yeah, it feels like it can compound really quick. Like building momentum with a brand is slow. It's always going to feel slow, especially, even though if looking back, it's actually relatively quick, like like for me. Um, but yeah, it can compound real quick. And I guess the work you do on the products, on the brand, building the team, building the back end. Because another thing I'm proud of with the brand as well, now we've got over 3,000 trust pilot reviews rated 4.4 out of five, which is a lot better than most of our competitors. There's a lot more volume on there as well. And I think, especially in the UK, like trust pilot reviews is a good general sentiment of like what customers think. So yeah, like scaling, but also scaling with genuinely good reviews. You know, people messaging me every day saying the product's changed their life, all that sort of shit. I, I do feel like we're building like a, a legitimate brand and, a, and a, a genuinely good product. So yeah, it's cool. Um, but yeah, obviously the goalposts always move because, you know, I know people that are doing five or six million a month, which makes me feel very fucking small. Um, but I suppose, yeah, the beauty of this series is obviously when I started a bit over two years ago, I wanted to get to 100k a month and we did that in like the, I think, second or third full month. Um, and it's taken like two years to get to seven figures a month. So that's a cool milestone that's happened. Um, and hopefully we can get to like two or three million a month in like the next year or two which would be nice because it can definitely compound and, you know, it's exponential growth from here. Fuck me, I'm sweating. I literally got out of the shower, did a massive run. Um, yeah, so that's a cool milestone. Nice to get back in the saddle to that scale. Obviously a lot more work to do though. Um, and yeah, goalposts keep moving. I think the other point on that is as well, like I probably used to be in the mindset of, you know, well, I used to literally run brands for like two, three years and then well, two years and then do the next thing. Like I'm two years and two months into this one. And I, I sometimes do get new ideas because that's just the way my ADHD founder creative type brain works. Um, but I think it's five to seven years minimum to build like a legitimate, big, successful brand to go like properly big. And by properly big, I mean probably like 30 to 50 million in revenue and beyond. Um, I think that's going to take me five to seven years realistically. And we're two years in, so we'll see. But I guess just on that, you know, just learning to think longer term, be more patient, it's cringe and cliche, but appreciate the journey, like smell the roses as, as you're growing, like stop to zoom out sometimes and think, well, we've actually made a lot of progress. So yeah, I think just thinking longer term to build like a legit, a legit brand at the scale that I want to get to. Fuck me, I'm really sweating. Um, yeah, I'll close out. I feel rusty on this pod. You can probably tell I've not recorded one in like four weeks or something at my desk, properly speaking. Um, and yeah, the other thing is like five to seven years feels long, but time flies. It feels like five minutes ago I launched a brand. It feels like five minutes ago I was fucking 18. I'm 28 now. It's crazy. Um, and that kind of scares me how quick time goes. But at the same time, it's like the time's going to pass. In five years time, you'll say, fuck me, that time flew. So you may as well push every area of life, you know, fitness, personal life, work, as hard as possible in every area, every day, really, because the time's going to pass and you, you'll get to the point where I'll be 30 in two years, which is fucking mad. And I'll be like, wow, I launched the brand four years ago and it, it went like that. So sometimes shit can feel like it's taken ages and it does to me a lot. I'm very impatient, but at the same time, this is like the, the dichotomy of time in life or something. 
feels like it's taken ages, but then once it's gone, it feels like it was a blink. So I suppose the lesson and point there, I think I'm realizing is just don't stress about how long it's going to take. Just try and do as much as you can every single day and eventually that'll add up and the time will have flown by anyway. So yeah, on that um, reflective point, I'm sweating my ass off. <laughs> I'm 10 minutes into this video. Yeah, things are moving the right way. It's been a, a good few months. A lot of groundwork has been done. A lot of lessons have been learned. You know, I look back the past two years and think, wow, there's a fuckload of stuff I shouldn't have done or I would have done differently in hindsight. But I think that's probably always going to be the case to some extent. The key thing is just learning from that, pivoting and pressing on to the next the next ch next chapter, really. So, yeah, good, good progress being made. Obviously, always day one. I'm always humbled by the, the success and levels above of people around me. And I don't think I'll ever be that guy that hits a certain number and starts flash, you know, flashing the cash on stupid shit like I used to be, because I'm just a lot more mature and a lot more, I don't know, just different mindset these days. Like I really don't consider anything that I'm doing successful at all in any way, even though it is going the right way, there is good progress. Um, because I realized that where I want to get to is so much further ahead of where I've ever been that, yeah, I need to just stay, stay focused, stay humble, stay focused on the task at hand, you know, win the day, win the month, win the year sort of, sort of thing. Obviously like not to say I can't enjoy the process and be like happy with how things are going. I wouldn't ever say I'm really proud of like progress I'm making, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just a much more humble guy than I used to be. I think, um, whether that's evident on these videos or not, but Anyway, I'm rambling. Good progress. Hope everyone's well. The next six weeks tend to be quite slow for e so we'll see how they go. Obviously, like end of July, August, historically quite slow. I'll be going away a bit, as will probably everyone else in the team and so on. So, yeah, excited to put the put foundations in for September onwards where we can really, really push it. So, boom. On that note, subscribe to the pod. If you come into the yacht event in two months, that'd be fucking sick. I might make a video on a bit more details on that soon. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers for watching. Peace.